Right then folks, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching this. For those of you that are regular here, you will know that we're currently on a 12 month jolly, driving and traveling around Europe in our self-converted camper van. And we are having a great time. But since we left and we've been putting the videos out, we have been inundated with the same question over and over again. And that is how are we getting around the 90 day rule? Well, that and uh, as Emily had a pan of chocolate, yeah. So in this video, I'm gonna do my very best to answer the first one and you will have to wait until Sunday to find out the answer to the second. So I should explain that right from the off, all we each have is one of these uh, bog standard British passport. Mine dates back to easier times for travel and Emily has one of these shiny new, very restrictive black ones that they've been given out since we left the EU. That's all we have, no dual nationality or special visas, just our regular British passports. And it's in our leaving the EU where I think some of the confusion lies. So I'm gonna put a map up on the screen right now that I hope you'll all recognize. Basically, it's a map of Europe. And full disclaimer, I'm gonna use some graphics in this video, some visual aids, if you will, that I've made myself to try and help explain all this. But in all honesty, they are not very good. It's not my strong point, but hopefully these are gonna help you understand it a little bit better. Anyway, this is a map of Europe. Now, Europe is a continent and the UK is a country within it. Always has been and most likely always will be. What we left on the 1st of January this year, 2021, was the European Union. We're still European, we're still part of Europe, we're just not in the European Union in anymore or the EU. Now, to make life a little bit easier, I'm gonna color in the whole of Europe in blue to start with. Ignore Turkey and Russia, they're a little bit complicated as they kind of stretch across Europe and into Asia, so we're just gonna ignore them for now, but I will talk a little bit about Turkey at the end. But for the sake of this video, all countries in Europe, that includes us, remember we are part of Europe, are coloured in blue. So now that Europe is all nicely organised and coloured in blue, I'm going to confuse things a little and I'm going to put all the countries that aren't in the EU in yellow. This now obviously includes us, the UK. But to be honest, this is kind of irrelevant information. What's more important is the countries that are in or out of what's called the Schengen area. Something we also left when we left the EU and it's this Schengen area which dictates the 90 day rule and the bit you really need to understand to help you with your travel plans. The Schengen area comprises of 26 European countries that abolished all passport control for the sake of free and unrestricted movement of people. It used to be 27 and we used to be able to move between them freely for indefinite periods of time or for longer periods of time. But now it's 26 countries because we've left and it puts us in the same category as many other nationalities where we are only allowed within this Schengen area for a total of 90 days within the 180 days. And I will explain that in a second. Uh, but this has always been the case for other nationalities. So Americans, um, Australians, Canadians, they've always had to abide by this 90 days in a 180 day rule. And now we from the UK have to do the same. So now I'm gonna put a map up of Europe and the Schengen area. Blue again for everyone in the Schengen and red for all the countries that aren't in Schengen. You'll notice that there are some countries that aren't in the EU but are in the Schengen, Norway and Iceland, for example, Switzerland, they were previously yellow. And then there are some countries that are in the EU but aren't in Schengen, Croatia and Romania, for example. And then there are some that aren't in either, Serbia, Macedonia, Albania, they're neither in the Schengen or the EU. This makes things incredibly confusing for sure, but for the purpose of travel, we are only really concerned with which countries are in blue and which countries are in red, which countries are in Schengen and which countries aren't. So once you've got your head around this and understanding it's only really the Schengen countries that count, it's actually very simple. We can be anywhere in the blue area for a total of 90 days and then we have to leave for 90 days. That doesn't mean we have to leave mainland Europe and come home to the UK. We just need to be in any one of the countries in red after we've been in the blue countries for 90 days. And here's where it gets interesting. The 180 days is actually rolling. Now this gets confusing too, but I'll try and simplify it as best I can now. So the 90 days in 180 days, I'm gonna put up now 180 colored lines, each one, and again, this is my terrible graphics, but hopefully a visual aid will help this make a little bit more sense. So each one of these lines represents one day. And in keeping with the color scheme of our map, blue is one day in the Schengen area and red is one day outside of the Schengen area. Now, if you're traveling, the easiest way to manage this would be to spend 90 days in Schengen and then 90 days out. So this first line here is day one, followed by 89 more days in which gives you 90 days. Then you would need to leave and stay out until you reach this line, which is day 180. So the red line's 90 days out, a total of 180 days. Now, because it's a roll in 180 days, when you get to day 181, day one falls off. It's irrelevant because it's no longer inside of your 180 day period. So this blue line here, which was day two, now becomes day one. And if you now add up all the blue lines on the top row, it's now only 89. So you can go back into the Schengen and start racking up blue lines again. And this just continues. Every time a new day starts, one of the first days, the beginning day, falls off the end. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. 
Now, here's the thing, you don't have to do it in 90 day blocks. You will probably want to save uh, at least a week or two at the end in case you need to drive home or you want to get across Europe to a different country out of Schengen, a case of emergency, some reason you're going to want to save at least a few days of your first 90. But you can do it however you like. So you can do 30 in, 30 out, 30 in, 30 out, 30 in, 30 out, which would look a little bit like this. This still adds up to 180 days. 90 in blue, which are 90 days in, and 90 in red, which are 90 days out. And it works the same. Once you get to day 181, day one, the first day, the first line just falls off again, and you can come back in. This time though, only for 30 days, because once you've done this 30 days, you'll be back to 90 blue lines. So if you counted up all the blue lines now, there'd be 90, and you would need to leave for another 30 days to pick up 30 red lines to get back to that first line, blue line falling off. So again, I hope that makes sense. This is how I see it in my head, and I'm hoping this gives you an idea of how the rolling contract works. So if you are gonna do it by mixing the days up, and that's how we'll do it to an extent, it does get a little bit confusing, but as long as you keep track and always add up how many days you've been inside the last 180 days, you'll be fine. So just count back from 180 days from where you are now, count how many days you've been in, how many days you've been out, and as long as it's less than 90 within the 180, you've still got days left within the Schengen zone. So I hope, again, that makes sense. I'm getting confused trying to say it to you, but hopefully you're getting it. So with all that being said, this is how we are getting around the 90 day rule. And we're not really getting around it, we're actually abiding by the rules, but by going into European countries that aren't in Schengen, we can stay in Europe for at least a period of 12 months without having to come all the way back to the UK. So that is how we are staying in mainland Europe, for 12 months and not breaking the 90 and 180 day rule. Hopefully you got it. So I mentioned earlier that some of the countries that aren't in Schengen are still in the EU and this is a really good thing for us and what's even better is they've got their own rules. So for Croatia and Romania for example you can go into those countries individually so you can spend 90 days in Croatia before you need to come out again. So they've got their own immigration rules which means we've got a bit more time in those individual countries. So we could do 90 days in the Schengen, 90 days in Croatia, 90 days back in the Schengen, 90 days in Romania. So it works really really well and because they are in the EU still or even in Europe still, it's actually really easy for us because our travel insurance, our breakdown cover, our internet will all still work and be active. So having those options that are still very much uh, modern, should we call them European countries, that we can go into for longer periods of time makes the whole process really, really simple. The only issue, and this is going to bring me on to Turkey, is that in the winter months these countries can be a little bit cold, which is why every van lifer and their wife this year seems to be heading to Turkey, because normally you could go off to Spain, but Spain is a long way away from the red zone that you need to get to to get your 90 days out of Schengen. Morocco is always an option, but Morocco at the minute I think it's still up and down with Covid, whether it's letting tourists in, so Turkey seems to be the place to go, but Turkey brings its host of its own problems. So basically a very small part of Turkey is considered Turkey in Europe, the rest of it is on the Asian side, and this is where things get a bit tricky because things like our internet are not our travel insurance covers us but I know for a lot of people their travel insurance won't cover them on the Asian side and the big one for me is the breakdown cover now both the AA and the RAC will cover you for Turkey in Europe but the minute you go into the big main part of Europe where you want to be for the warm weather your breakdown cover doesn't work now this is also the same for um, the van insurance. Now you can buy van insurance fully comp in the UK, but it's incredibly expensive and quite rare to find. Now what most people do is buy their insurance at the border, which is great, but it's only third party. But like I say, none of this really bothers me, but breakdown cover does. So trust me when I say, if anyone's done the research on this, it's me, and you cannot get breakdown cover in the UK that will cover you for the Asian part of Turkey which means hopefully you can buy it at the border, but how reliable and how good it is and how likely they are to come and get you is a whole other question. So if anyone does know the answer to that, please let me know in the comments, because I'd be highly interested to know if anyone's broken down in Turkey, use border breakdown insurance if it's a thing, and it's got them out of the shit, basically. So that is it. I appreciate this video has been a lot of talking. I appreciate the graphics have not been all that great, but hopefully they have helped to explain it. Um, like I say, I've done the graphics myself. I had to colour those maps in over and over again in Photoshop, so I've probably missed the odd Nordic little tiny island in the arse end of nowhere, so please don't berate me in the comments, because the whole point of this video is just to very simply answer the, those people who've got the question, how are we doing this, and how can they do the same? So hopefully it's answered that, and hopefully it's going to save mine and Emily's thumbs a little bit on Sunday nights when we have to keep answering this question over and over again, but it's actually really simple to stay in Europe for a long period of time. The only thing is it takes a bit more planning, a bit more thought, and you can't go to the more Western European countries all of the time. So that's it really. So I hope you found it useful. <laughs> I'm all talked out, so I'm gonna end the video and I will see you all on Sunday when we're back to our usual travel vlogs. Emily's in the video, it's a good one. So yeah, stay tuned, see you on Sunday. We found holes in these walls. We like what we saw. 
Seems so strong until it falls. The final 